Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. This is going to be the first video in the three video series of the top 10 cookeries available on the market today. Now this one is going to be specifically about the production cookery. So there's not going to be any handmade cookeries uh, in this video of the top 10. So these are the top 10 production cookeries that I feel are available to the consumer right now that they could get their hands on. And uh, although there are some that might fit, uh, there's like slight variations, and I'll show an example of with one of them, um, how there's two very similar made cookeries that uh, could very easily um, been, they could have been considered separately, but because they're so close and alike, that um, I chose just one of them. And so I'll, I'll show you and talk about that. So uh, without any further ado, um, I'm going to I'm going to show you that I have my list of scientific uh, facts here of what I came up with as I scored each of these videos um, based upon the criteria. So the criteria in which these cookeries um, all of them have in common, and, and uh, some perform better than others in some of these areas. And so what we took into consideration, and this is how I was able to point them and determine which one fell in the hierarchy of this list. Uh, number one, and there's 12 points to this criteria. Number one is weight. Number two is size. Number three is the material, which would be the steel that they used the handle material they used, the scabbard material they used, and if there were any accessories, like maybe a, uh, a ferro rod, a sharpener, compass, whatever it is. You know. um, and then we get into number four, which is the comfort of use. Five is the performance, how well it did, what it was supposed to do. Um, six, the eye appeal. Is it an ugly thing, but it works? Or is it actually something that, wow, it's almost too pretty to use? And some of those cookeries, believe me, not necessarily in this list, but in the handmade list, there are some that actually, you know, you might think twice before you want to use it. And yet you should use it because it's a very functional tool. Uh, carry system, strength and durability is number eight. Number nine is balance. Number ten is design, which is the three F's, form, follows, function, and philosophy of use. And then number 11 is the sharpness. And the last but not least, uh, 12, is the price. What did, the, what did this um, item sell for, or what does it sell for? And what I base that upon is if you were to go to Amazon to buy this cookery, not necessarily your, your uh, gun store, your knife store, which you could go to get these, but Amazon is, is something that everybody's familiar with. And a lot of times you can find the best bargains there on some of these items. So, um, you know, I, I decided to make that the list, uh, the price list to kind of go by. So you have kind of a gauge as to whether it's something that will work in your budget or not. Okay. When considering any of the knives in this list. Now, before I begin, although there are cookeries that didn't make it in this top 10 list doesn't mean that they are junk, that they should be avoided. Um, I would say, you know, that's probably not the case. Most of them could probably consider they just, there might be some, some points that they didn't score as well, so that's why they didn't end up in this top list. These are the ones that actually scored the best out of, because I actually looked at more cookery than just 10. And, uh, and so I came up this list by going through this criteria and coming up with these ten, top 10 contenders. From the lowest to the highest, they will serve a purpose and they will function very, very well. So they wouldn't be a bad, even if you chose the one that's scored the lowest on this list, it still is a good contender, a good one to consider in putting in your kit. So uh, I just wanted to qualify that right off the bat. Um, I don't think it's a horrible uh, item. Okay, so starting with the list, um, the, the, I'm going to kind of give you an idea. Okay, uh, number 10 on the list was Gerber Knives. Now, Gerber Knives uh, started coming out with some machete-type uh, cookeries and uh, blades. 
One of the first ones that they were doing, um, and I forget what, uh, it was um, some famous um, uh, adventure guy, and I, I forget the name that they, they gave it, but it was a parang, and um, it became very popular. A lot of people went out and purchased it, but then they started having failures with it, where it was breaking at the handle and stuff. So it actually became dangerous to use. And they had to pull it off the market and do the repairs to it and then bring it back out, reintroduce it. But along with that, uh, they really have been stepping up with the quality of their, their uh, large blades. And um, this one is their take on a cookery. Now this one did uh, rate the lowest. Uh, it rated, I believe, a 42 uh, out of uh, the highest score, which was 58.5. And uh, so this one rated a 42. Now, it uses a rubberized handle, plastic material. Uh, it is a high carbon steel. Um, let me see if I have that written down as to what steel they used. Um, I forget. I, it's, it's, uh, it, it is not like 1095. It's actually, uh, I think in the 70s, maybe a 1070 high carbon steel. Um, it holds a fairly decent edge. It is a good chopper. It did perform quite well. Um, it's not too heavy in the hand. Um, it doesn't exactly look uh, like a perfect cookery. It really follows more like the cold steel uh, all-terrain chopper style. It has a very big pronounced belly and a slight curve to it. Uh, but yet they're calling it a cookery and it is um, it's, it, it's decent. It's very decent. I was really pleasantly surprised when I got it. Uh, the scabbard isn't the best. I don't really care for it that much. Um, when it hangs on your side, the handle comes up very high and hits you in the rib cage. And it does not allow for molly compatibility. So it doesn't allow you to... Uh, you could slide it inside a backpack and that's fine. But it doesn't really allow you to lash it onto the outside of your pack if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, there's no additional things. You do have a leg tie at the bottom and um, a relatively small belt loop here. And it holds it right here where that handle is right up in your rib cage. So um, pokes you in the side and is very uncomfortable. Plus, it incorporates a, a zipper up here at the slot. And you have this uh, Velcro only, no snap. Uh, retention here and even with that um, uh, zipper there it doesn't retain it completely so some of the cutting edge can be exposed and can cause a hazard so this these are some of the reasons why this particular cookery rated so low but still a good uh, a good cookery machete um, for taking out on a trail clearing a fire lane um, using in your backyard to um, get some of those branches and trees and stuff, it would be uh, quite useful for that. Second, uh, the number um, number nine on the list is Cold Steel's um, uh, Cookery Machete. Now they make a variety of this, so. Um, this one, I could have brought in a lot of others, you know, I have uh, a lot of their different machetes. Uh, they make one that's actually um, about the same size as this that would be equal to this. Uh, Mobby might even perform a little better, uh, but I don't have it uh, as of yet. And that is the one that's based off of the Kukri Plus, uh, the Gurkha Kukri Plus machete. And so it has um, a little bit better of a... Uh, cookery shape to it and it has a little integrated handguard to it. Um, that one might actually perform as good as this or a little bit better. But what I do like about this is <clears throat> they actually kept a, the, one of their first cookery designs when uh, Cold Steel was coming out with a cookery called the All Terrain Chopper and it had this same profile to it. It had a very pronounced belly, a slight curve up at the top, of course, much stick, uh, thicker uh, material was made out of carbon-5 high-carbon steel. They did make a stainless steel version one, and they did also, uh, they didn't make the sand mine of that one. Um, 
they did away with that when they came out with the Gurkha cookery, and uh, but they kept the design and pattern used it for their machete, which is a really, really good, uh, um, it's a very good ergonomic shape in that it's a very strong and capable chopper, even though it is uh, made from the uh, 1055 high carbon steel and uh, doesn't have a really thick spine, it's more of a machete. It doesn't have a flex like many machetes do, so it's rather rigid, which makes it a very uh, competent chopper for the type of knife it is. It is also very low on the price point, and um, I will find my price list here and, and when we come to the end of this, and I'll go over each of them. Uh, but this one's like maybe about $26 on Amazon. Um, the same goes for the, Ger the Gerber, it's roughly around $29, so less than $30 and you got yourself um, a really good uh, competent chopping tool that would be work great in a campsite. This could split logs, although it doesn't. It's not very thick, but you could definitely baton with it, and you don't have to worry about the the edge chipping. They keep that rock hole rating at a relatively low rating. Where it really failed was this scabbard. Now, I have uh, I have several of these. <laughs> And I have taken the scabbards, which aren't all that great, but I've, I've actually repurposed them for a lot of my antiques so that I can house them and they don't get damaged. They're good for that, um, to, to keep it from damaging the edge and having an exposed sharp edge um, sitting out somewhere where you could get yourself cut if you weren't paying attention. So on that, it's good. It's, it's better carry system where it hangs on the belt, the handle doesn't hit you um, high like where the Gerber did, but it's really rather flimsy. It does flop around a bit. Um, I don't tend to keep mine on the belt. I just carry it in the scabbard um, or in my hand and, um, when I am using it. Um, it's not the worst Kodora sheath, but it is definitely not the best. Um, there's, there's a lot of others that are in this competition that do a better job with this Kodora scabbard. Um, and I have put the plastic ends here, but they don't have it uh, closed on the ends here, so the cutting edge and the point can still poke through. So it's kind of silly. But this one was number nine and would be a very excellent uh, choice for a budget chopper. Number eight was um, put out by Charade. Now, Charade has a couple other cookery machetes, and this one falls in that category of cookery machete, but uh, those don't look as, as cookery-like as this one does, um, and they have holes um, punctured through the blade here to help lighten the blade. I don't like holes punched through my blades because those tend to be um, known as, can be weak points. Um, if you're going to lighten the blades, there's a lot of other ways to lighten the blades by fullering it and so forth, um, tapering it uh, like some of the contenders in this list have done. And uh, But this one, I think they nailed it really good as far as a good cookery design. There's a lot of good things going on for this particular cookery. Um, and it, rate, it got a, a score of 46 on it. It's a light to medium chopper. It's not meant or designed to be a heavy duty chopper. But with the ergonomics of that a cookery provides for you, it is a very competent chopper and it will outperform um, other small machetes that have this type of um, uh, blade thickness. Now they use a stainless steel. Um, it's a Chinese stainless steel, probably equivalent to a 440. And I'm not one who really likes um, stainless steels for cookeries because they're large blades designed to really take a lot of punishment. Stainless steels sometimes uh, they get it up to a higher Rockwell rating closer to 60 and they will tend to uh, chip more than roll. And once you chip a blade um, it's a little bit harder to repair it, uh, especially when you're out in the field. So that's one of the uh, criteria in which causes to, to uh, be graded lower. It has an excellent rubberized style handle that has a great ergonomics and great feel in the hand. Doesn't roll. You get a good safe grip, and it doesn't fatigue your hand. 
Uh, the scabbard is okay. Um, it's not bad at all, and especially under the, the kind of Kodora style. It's slid up on the top, easy to get your cookery in. A little bit harder when it's hanging from your belt, but it hangs relatively low. Now, this one came with shoulder straps. I took that off. Um, I'm not one who would carry my cookeries around my shoulder. I'd either be in my backpack or on my side. But some, some of you might prefer it that way, and it does come with that and provide that which gives you some uh, carry options. It's not Molly compatible, so it, those options aren't available on it. Um, so these are factors that caused it to uh, be reduced a little bit lower. Um, a lot of people don't understand this strap, and I want to explain it a little bit. This strap that goes around the handle, when you have like a, a Kydex sheath or, or an Equidora sheath like this, where you have this strap here, it retains this cookery very well. It doesn't slide out. There's no chance of injury. That's not the purpose of this strap. What happens when you have something hanging from your belt is that you can get um, a lot of motion this way. And you've got this handle that's slapping against your side when you're out there hiking. And that becomes quite annoying. If you have that strap that, that retains that from doing it, you know, this one could be a little higher to keep that handle. But this is a pretty rigid um, scabbard, so you don't get a lot of that motion. So it, it helps reduce that. And they do, uh, they put a, provide a snap for it, which is a very good closure. So it did very well. And again, like I said, 46 it rated. And that's number eight. Number seven is not really a true cookery, but it does have a recurve. Um, it is probably uh, Kershaw's closest contender to a cookery. And uh, I did include that in this one because I, it's cookery-ish enough to be in this list, and it is a very good, useful tool. Um, it has a rubberized uh, uh, handle grip to a hard plastic with a high-carbon steel. And again, they use um, uh, a lesser-known high-carbon steel, but it's a very good carbon steel. It does keep good edge, and uh, it's probably got a Rockwell rating around 57. And uh, 90 degree spine on it, you could throw sparks with, with a ferro rod, it's a very useful tool. Um, it's 10 inch blade, which is a good size for carrying around a campsite, um, cutting a fire lane or uh, clearing some brush, but also you could build a shelter with it and do a lot of things. So it's a very competent knife. It's a little bit too aggressive on the texturing on the handle, which uh, until you get some of that worn down, it's going to create some um, calluses on the hand. You're going to get some hot spots on it. Uh, scabbard is its weakest point, although it's a hard plastic. Um, you don't have any fear of the blade cutting through it. As you can hear, it has a lot of rattle. doesn't hold it very secure. If you forget to put your retention strap on it, it'll slide right out. So you really have to think about putting that um, closing that there. Another thing is that there's no, um, there isn't that strap around the top to keep this from banging against your side when you're carrying it on your belt. And it's uh, a, a very light uh, Kodora, not very uh, stiff, so you can also get a lot of motion this way. So you get a lot of banging and annoyance on it. Not only that, you have a Velcro strap, which makes it easy for take on and off of your belt, but it being Velcro, if you're in a frigid or, or in a sandy environment, that could get compromised, and now you don't have that carry system. Now, this plastic does have some uh, holes in it. Uh, there's some lines here you could, uh, uh, and straps here that you could attach it to your backpack, and that would probably be the preferred way that this one should be carried. Uh, this one has a better steel, so it out, outdid the charade in that sense. But um, the scabbard is where it really suffered in that. And it scored a 49.5. And it's uh, number seven on our list. All right. And uh, number six is the K-Bar Machete. Now this one is, you can probably get this on Amazon for under $100. It's a little bit uh, more pricey. The, um, uh, the, uh, Kershaw Camp 10 can be purchased for in the $50 range on Amazon. This one a little bit higher than the $50 range. This one is um, 
it scored higher because all in all it is um, really well made. Uh, first of all, it uses the K-Bar's famous 1095 Crovan steel. Um, it has a little bit more chromium in it. Of course, they texture coat it uh, to reduce rust that does stay on the knife pretty well. Um, I've used this considerably. I haven't, you know, I have so many cookeries, it probably doesn't get as much use as if this was your only tool. Uh, you would probably see some of that coating wear off. But it's a, it's a very good and, and competent chopper. It's got a little bit of a bulky handle, but it is ergonomically rounded and has a nice good um, uh, palm swell to it that keeps it in your hand relatively comfortably without causing hot spots. It uh, has a nice um, a bird beak pommel. It's a full tang all the way through. Very strong, very good chopper. Uh, again, where it fails is the scabbard. They use a leather and Kedora, so it is a rigid um, scabbard, but you know they provide two straps on this. And as you can see, I did not uns unsnap this uh, closure here to remove the cookery. Um, so this strap right here is, is, has no function to it. There's nothing, no reason for that to be there. The one that you do need is this one here. Now it can pivot a little bit out of the way to get your, your cookery in and out, but it could, uh, it could do that better. You have to think about it, but you can move it completely out of the way so when you return it you don't have to have fear of cutting this leather strap, and that's good. It's a snap closure, which is also good. Uh, but without it, you do have the slippage of the cookery, and it can slide forward. It doesn't slide forward enough to where any cutting edge is exposed, because your cutting edge on this particular cookery doesn't start until way up here. So you actually have a lot of purchase point to where you could get in there and um, you know, you could use two fingers up before the cutting edge and uh, be in front of that uh, guard and do your whittling. So there's some useless, um, you know, they could bring that cutting edge a little bit closer to that and you would have uh, more cookery option in that regard. Um, but all in all, it is a, a competent chopper and a good choice. And that one rated number six. 53.5 on the scoring. All right. Um, next on the list, and this would actually, if I subjectively, I would put this probably even higher on the list, but um, it failed because of the scabbard. And here you can see why. There's a lot of sliding on this where it, it comes down. Again, no cutting edge is exposed, so it's not danger. It's just annoying because you're going to have that sliding. How it fits on your belt, you've got a generous belt loop, so you can get a good, um, I wear like a two inch belt, and that one uh, fits on there. I don't get a lot of movement and, and, and craziness going on. It does have one snap right here with a slit open top. Uh, you have the riveting on the side to keep the edge from um, cutting through, and you do have a lanyard tie for the leg. Um, but it's, it, they could have, and they should, really, this is such a good cookery that they should upgrade this scabbard. If they put a better scabbard to this, one that was more like a uh, Kydex style type of scabbard, this would be actually higher in this list. And, I, and this cookery is the only one that is balanced in such a way that it is balanced like the handmade cookeries, and I'm going to demonstrate it here for you using my nail, if I can get this to position right and to stay on the nail, uh, this is on the nail tip, but this cookery is balanced to where it will actually stay on the, on the nail head and not fall off. Well, it's slid. <laughs> but hopefully I'm showing and demonstrating that this is a very well balanced cookery. If I can get it just right, where 
where the balance is without slipping. Here you can see it doesn't have any fullers on it to lighten the back part of the spine which would allow it to stand vertically. This is actually so well balanced it, it, it will stand on the tip of a nail and none of the other cookeries that are in this list does that but this one. So it is a very well balanced cookery and has the balance point right where a cookery should be where the he most of the weight is at towards the front so right here um, probably about two inches from the handle grip is where you would have it. So that proves that this you know dancing on this nail head um, it's a very very well balanced cookery. It has about a quarter inch spine, 90 degree, you could throw sparks off of it. 1095 high carbon steel, and they do a very good job. Ontario knives have been making knives here in the U.S. for a very long time. Back in World War II, they were providing um, the K-bars, uh, what is being classified as a K-bar, the fighting knives for the GIs, whether it be in the Army, the Marine Corps, Navy, um, they were providing them for them. So this is... Um, a very excellent, well-made cookery. 1095 high carbon steel and craton handle with some ribbing on it. Nice belly swell on it. Uh, bird beak pommel. Good hand protection here to keep your hand from sliding up on the cutting edge. It's comfortable to use. A little bit, just a little bit on the blocky side. It's rounded, but it really fills your hand. Um, and it doesn't create a lot of hot spots. You'll, you'll feel a little bit of use barehanded, but it's not bad. It's a very well made um, cookery. And like I said, if they did better on the scabbard, this would be much higher on this list. It is a very well made, well designed. It really followed the, the 3S form follows function very, very well, except for the scabbard. And even the scabbard, it's not as bad as some of the other ones as to how it hangs from your, your belt. It's not bad. But no Molly uh, compatibility. You could slide it inside a backpack, but not on the outside. And that one uh, got a 55 out of the score. Um, now the next one uh, is BK Becker. Now uh, BK Becker, um, Ethan Becker, uh, knew Hank Reinhardt, who was a guy who is no longer with us, who worked with Museum Replica. And I mentioned and talked quite a bit about him in one of my other videos. Uh, but um, Hank Reinhardt was good friends with Mike uh, Stewart with Bark River Knives. And back then he was um, running and operating uh, blackjack knives. And uh, the two of them got together and came up with a, uh, a cookery design that was uh, the predecessor to this one. Uh, later on they decided to do a, a machete version of this with I think Hank Reinhardt's son and Ethan Becker uh, was approached to do that with the K-Bar um, or with the um, BK Becker style handles and uh, Mike Stewart worked with him on that as well. Uh, that was discontinued back in uh, probably the late 1990s, but then Ethan and um, uh, BK Becker decided to revive it and come up with this beautiful cookery. This is an excellent uh, cookery design. It does follow the shape very well of a cookery, almost like a serapate. It's a little bit too wide here, but it does have that slender profile and long profile to it. And with Heathen's ergonomic handle, very comfortable in the hand. Um, I would like to see it with um, come out with a better material. And I do know they make a Kydex handle for it that you could take these pla hard plastic off and put that in better shape the same way. And and that will that definitely upgrades it. I have not upgraded mine yet uh, because those scales sometimes are not available, or when they are there. It can cost you about, it's like a $50 to $60 upgrade to your knife. And this one already sells for on Amazon for about $129, roughly $130 you can get this. 
It is made again with that 1095 uh, Crovan steel, which is excellent steel, and uh, it's a very good and prominent, uh, excellent cookery. Really chops and performs very well, just like a cookery should. And again, where they fail is with the scabbard. Now, what's a little bit better, it's like one step above the cold steel version. They have the hard plastic on the front, but they do encapsulate, come all the way around, so that way that point, point won't penetrate and uh, poke you later. And it does come with a drainage hole, so if this gets wet, it, water will come out. Um, it does have rivets on the side, which helps protect it from cutting through. Um, you do have a snap closure, and it is slit on the top. So when you are uh, sheathing it and housing it, uh, it will hold it very well. But there is a little bit of slippage, not much. And it has better retention than the others do. But I would like to see this with a better scabbard, and it would have rated much higher. Uh, this one rated at 55.5. Uh, Next is the Columbia Rivers, um, and it's this one's the K-Tac. They also make one that's almost identical to this, and it actually was the one that was used in a loan uh, by the gentleman that won that one. He was actually using this one. He came back to Columbia Rivers, gave them some design improvements, and they incorporated it and put it into this one. So this is the one that actually got graded, not this one. Uh, although I could have graded them separately because one has better than the other on, on this. Both would be excellent choices. This one's going to be less expensive on, e on uh, Amazon than this one would be. So, But we're talking about this one with the upgrades. Now this one has a hard plastic uh, scabbard that has some molly com compatibility, slid open top, um, does have a retention strap that's leather and can be moved out of the way when you go to draw the knife. It has good retention, so this knife doesn't need that to be held in its scabbard. Um, with a, just a very gentle tug, and you can pull this right out. Um, it has a dangler. It does uh, rest rather low off your belt, which is good. Um, it does get a little bit of a... Um, a, a wobble back and forth that can slap against you and there's nothing up here to keep that handle from hitting you. But with the leg tight, that would, if you utilize that and put it around your leg, it would eliminate that for the most part. Um, now let's get into the cookery. This one, like I said, is the upgrade. It does have uh, micarta handles, which was an excellent choice. Um, it's kind of a broomstick style handle, uh, which means that because it's rounded, it could roll in your hand. This one with the micarta, which is a little bit more tackier than the wood, doesn't do that like the other one did for me. Um, now, where they miss it on the design point, and for me to even say this, because um, Joe Flowers is such an excellent designer, uh, is that it is handle heavy. And that's not where you want your weight with... Um, a knife that has the geometry and the physics that a cookery gives you. It should be blade heavy and not handle heavy. So when you're holding this thing, it's like a weight. And you, you feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm pumping metal here to build my biceps and my, my, uh, my forearm here. Uh, because all the weight is in this handle. It's, it's the same way for the other one, uh, which is the heavy duty uh, cookery. So this is why this is not higher up on the list. It uses a 1070 high carbon steel, which is an excellent one. They put a nice convex edge, which is uh, the right type of edge for a cookery. It's very, uh, uh, it's very strong and sturdy. Gives a, a hair shaving sharp edge, but yet a very sturdy edge that could take uh, what a cookery is used for primarily in the field is chopping. Um, you can split wood with it, you can build shelters with it, and it's going to take quite a punishment. This one is built like a Humvee. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tank, but that, that tank weight is in the handle. So this is going to tire you out more. You're going to burn more calories using this cookery because the, the ergonomics of it, it wasn't balanced properly. So hence why it, it's not higher up on the list. Um, and actually... 
the Reinhardt cookery and the um, the Ontario cookery would rate higher than this one would because of their balances, where this one is not balanced properly. So, uh, and this one on the score, because of all the materials that are used, uh, it scored 55.5. Um, no, I'm sorry, 56, sorry, 56. Number two on the list. So that was number three. Number two on the list, um, surprisingly enough, is a small contender, and it is put out by um, uh, K-Bar. This is called the Cookery Fighter, and there's a lot of things that they got really right with this, even though it comes in a small package. It's actually a very competent, very useful uh, light to medium chopper, uh, small enough to be a combat knife. Um, I could see GI is actually carrying this in the field, and um, it doesn't. It's not super heavy. It's not going to weigh down their gear, and yet it's going to be very, very useful and functional, and probably would outperform some uh, fighting knives that are out there, like the regular K-Bar fighting knife. Uh, because you got a really good prominent belly here. It's cookery uh, shaped. You got a very strong um, uh, point to it. It's made out of that good 1095 Crovan steel. Uh, Craton handle, full tang all the way to the butt plate, which is a hammer uh, style butt plate that allow you to hammer nails or um, tent stakes uh, for defense. As it, since it's a fighting knife, uh, hammer blows, um, it does really good. You have a nice steel hand guard that keeps your hand from sliding up on the cutting edge. There's a little bit of an area where you could get up there and do your fine tuning with the pad of your uh, index finger and your thumb up on the spine. It's a 90 degree, but with the coating, it doesn't really allow for ferro rod striking very well, unless you were able to take some of that coating off, then you could use it for that. Um, very comfortable handle, light knife, and um, I've heard a lot of people give some bad criticism about this um, Kodora scabbard. It's like the top scabbards, which are Kodora over plastic, uh, insert. Theirs is really good and better than the tops and the reason why I say that is because it is truly ambidextrous. You can, um, this nice curved knife can fit in there right hand or left hand carry um, and it will al allow for that which is excellent so um, a variety, more of a variety of people will take advantage of that and be able to use it. Come to the carry pouch I have mine with my little uh, Carta. I bought this little skeletonized knife from K-Bar to put in there to kind of just uh, accentuate its cookery, cookeriness. Uh, but you don't have to necessarily put a knife in there. You can put your tender and stuff, other th uh, useful gear in that little pouch. Uh, this one does have the Velcro strap on that, but if your Velcro does give away, you have elastic strap that you can tuck it in there so it doesn't become totally useless. Uh, you have a snap closure that does move to both sides for orientation carry, uh, whether you're left hand or right hand. And this one does an excellent job. It has a nice D-ring um, uh, back here with this Kodora uh, strap that's uh, big enough to accommodate most belts. Uh, no, it's stitched in. It's not, you know, velcro strapped or anything, so you do have to slide it off the belt. But in this case, when you're sitting down, you can move it right out of the way uh, from sitting down. So you don't have to take it off your belt. All you have to do is release this strap up here. Now this strap is oriented in place in the correct position it should be, which would allow it not to slap against you when it's sitting on your belt. It's very comfortably on your belt. You do have leg tight lashings here. It is Molly compatible. Uh, so there's a lot of different carry options on it, and it does a very good job. Not only that, if, um, and you could get this for about $70 on Amazon, and if you spent the extra $30 to $50, I think it is, they do make them, there's a company that makes a Micarta, um, not a Micarta, I'm sorry, a Kydex scabbard for it. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't, because this is really... It's an excellent kit, and I think they did a very, very good job with it. And, um, and it does perform very well and does a lot of the cookery tasks. You could build a shelter with this. You could survive with this knife very easily, and it comes in a relatively small size and package. 
So that one rated 56.5, and it is number two on the list. Now, last but not least, number one, and for many of you, you probably won't be surprised by this one, uh, but it is the Cold Steel Gurkha Cookery, which made the top of the list. All in all, everything about this is a well thought out, and it took years of perfecting it, and they still are perfecting it there at Cold Steel. Um, right now it has been pulled off the shelves. It comes with a, um, uh, a tool, a, uh, A1 tool steel, um, which is an excellent, excellent steel. Keeps a very good edge. It's very strong and durable. You're getting a tool steel. But they're upgrading it to an A2 tool steel, which is a little better than the old one. And, uh, and I love A2 tool steel, so I can't wait for it to come out. Now, you can still find this on some shops. It is not available right now on Amazon. The reason why it's in this list is because I know they're coming out with the upgraded version of it, probably within the next month or two. Uh, now, with the pandemic going on, it may be a little bit longer. But once it hits it, it'll you know be exactly the same and roughly around the same price point. This one right now is probably the highest of all the knives that you've seen here. It sells for about 170 on um, Amazon. Uh, you might be able to get it in the 150s. I have seen it that low. Uh, we've even seen it, I think, about 145. Uh, but I don't know once it comes out with that A2 tool steel whether it will be available. Okay, so why is this number one? All in all, the package is excellent. Um, it's, it's, there's simplicity to it, and yet there's a lot of thought and complexity that went into it. The scabbard is their um, Secure X patented design. It's made of a hard plastic, very similar to uh, Kydex. It holds the blade very well, and there is very little rattle. So it's, it's really um, a good fit in there. What helps that is right here, this locking mechanism. Uh, you don't need this retention strap to, to keep this blade in. It will not come out. The only way that you're going to come out is by grabbing your handle and taking your thumb and pushing it off and then you can release it. The cookery itself, flat grind, comes all the way down to a very prominent edge. Very thick, 5 sixteenths of an inch up at the handle, but it does have a distilled taper that comes all the way down to a very fine point. Don't be afraid of this point because of the A2 steel and the tempering and hardening that they have done. This tip will not break on you. You could pry with it. Um, excellent true cookery design. Lynn Thompson, when he came out with this design, took it down to the Bando Society, which is uh, um, some Gurkhas that live here in the United States. They uh, actually tested and looked at his blade and gave him their seal of approval. And he's literally put that seal on the blade on both sides of it, uh, etched in there. And uh, it is a very competent, very useful. There's lots of videos out, out on YouTube of uh, demonstrating this cookery. Um, I've used it. I have two of these. <laughs> this was my go-to cookery for a long time. Um, and uh, I really love it. 90 degree spine on it will throw it sparks off a ferro rod. Uh, the the Kadorish, or this um, uh, hard plastic scabbard does an excellent job in keeping, uh, keeping this knife safe. It doesn't uh, take away or dull your edge. It's not like glass filled. Uh, there is a drainage hole at the bottom that allows fluid to flow out. Uh, Molly compatible. The Kedora, um strap here is useful. It does fit very nicely on your belt. It does ride low so it doesn't um, bang into you too much or gouge you in the side. Um, it is Velcro and a snap closure so you can easily take it on and off your belt. And if that Velcro gets uh, compromised, that snap will keep it retained. And the other thing is here you've got that strap that allows um, the handle not to bang into you so much on the side. So all in all, did very good and it got a uh, 58 out of uh, 58.5 and this is the number one production cookery. Um, and that's it. That's the, the top 10 production cookeries available. Uh, out on the market. And like I mentioned, you know, Columbia Rivers come, came out one, uh, Tops has one that aren't in this list because I don't have them to test them. 
against these. So they could very well be in this list and would have um, probably edged out uh, some of the lower contenders. I hope you find this uh, interesting and information valuable. Uh, any of these cookers would be excellent choices to put in a bug out kit or to uh, use on a camping trip or um, hiking, backpacking. Some are a little bit more uh, lighter to carry than others, uh, like for instance no, our number two choice, the K-Bar Fighting Cookery, uh, would be a very good choice. Uh, but any of these would be excellent to put in your gear and to make them, at, whether it be your first purchase of a cookery or um, an addition to your um, already collection of cookeries. Hope you like it. Hope you found this interesting and useful to you. Namaste. Please like and subscribe on my YouTube page. If you have any questions or comments you want to leave me, uh, you can leave them there, or you can also leave them at my Blue Dragonfly Trading Post on Facebook. Please visit my website to see the handmade knives and cookeries that we offer there at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Thank you very much for watching. God bless and stay tuned for video number two on the handmade cookeries from Nepal and that list. That was a tough one, let me tell you. All right, thank you. God bless. Stay safe, stay at home, and may you stay well. God bless.